let me share the screen okay yeah yes sir Nifty, you can start in the middle. Yes. First, let me. So, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our second day workshop on technical paper writing during first October to second October two zero two one on the occasion of celebration of I Triple Day two zero two one, which is organized by I Triple MTT Student Branch Chapter IIT BHU Varanasi and I Triple MTT Young Professional Community. So today we have webinar on asset of paper writing by Pankaj Kumar Choudhury, who is currently professor at the Institute of Microengineering and Nano Electronics, University Kebangsan, Malaysia. Uh, so in this presentation, he will explain different methodologies about research paper uh, writing. So now I would like to request uh, or invite Dr. B. N. Basu sir. Who is former professor of IIT BHU to say few words about our event? Bien Basu sir. Basu sir. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all, it is a great honor for the group we have in our midst Professor Ankaj Kumar Choudhury, Editor-in-Chief of Journal of Electromagnetic Waves and Applications. He's a great scholar. We are fortunate. I was fortunate in particular to have him in our Department of Electronics Engineering, IIT BHU, uh, as a postdoctoral uh, research scientist in the lab, in the Communication Engineering Lab of Professor S.K. Cock. Perhaps I was at that time the head of the department too. So he was a great, uh, a great uh, scholar and uh, so many publications, books, etc. Recently, very recently, he has uh, to his credit goes the was a book called Metamaterial. Now the book has been, I think uh, is, you can see in a net, it is going to be published shortly. Is, is it published? Yeah. Now it is in press. It is, yeah. So just two it days back, I, two days back right. I received the message that yes. it is in press. Yeah. His book is due to Professor Pankaj Choudhury. Uh, it is a book on metamaterial, particularly those who are working in the area of microwaves, microwave tubes, vacuum electron devices, and so on, microwave engineering. This book is very, very interesting because you can find the, the, the method of enhancing the performance of microwave circuits, microwave components, microwave tubes by 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 the assistance of metal material okay i know many of you including dr somak bhattacharya is interested in metal material metal surface and so on so i don't want to come i don't want to say more words about and come between you and and professor Pankaj Kumar Choudhury, I request, I think, uh, the, the organizers to allow him to say, uh, to, to present his uh, lecture. Uh, I know, uh, I know uh, he is an excellent orator. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your introduction. Yes, uh, the 
uh, now i am requesting to our uh, uh, speaker uh, uh, sorry our uh, uh, professor uh, dr somobhatta chere to introduce our speaker dr pankaj kumar choudhary somok somok sir okay so thank you vipi and thank you professor basu for the nice introduction so let me just quickly uh, uh, introduce our speaker professor pankaj kumar choudhary so pankaj kumar choudhary received phd degree in physics in 1992 he held academic as well as research positions in india canada japan and malaysia during 2003 to 2009 he was a professor at the faculty of engineering multimedia university cyber jaya malaysia during the span he also served the telecom research and development as a consultant for projects on optical devices thereafter he became professor at the institute of micro engineering and nano electronics university kebangsan malaysia the national university of malaysia his current research interests include optical waveguides complex mediums fiber and integrated optics fiber optic devices optical sensors and metamaterial properties he has published more than 260 research papers in peer reviewed international journals and conference proceedings contributed chapters to 18 research level books edited and co-edited eight research le level books in these areas he is the section editor of optic international journal for light and electronic devices and the editor in chief of the journal of electromagnetic waves and applications also he is a fellow of iep and senior member of ITPLE OSA and SPI so without uh, wasting any further time so let me uh, invite professor choudhury for his talk thank you uh, professor basu and dr soma perhaps i don't deserve that much elaborated description and regarding my introduction but anyway okay you can uh, just let me share the screen uh you can see the screen yeah perfect yes perfect. okay fine thank you very much anyway a very good afternoon to all my fellow colleagues and students this is pankaj from the ukm which is called as the university of kebangsa in malaysia and i am thankful to dr somak uh, for inviting me to deliver this talk and uh, <clears throat> also professor b n basu the ex head of the electronics engineering department of the it vhu who suggested actually my name for this talk those days it uh, used to be it instead of iit actually so and prof basu has been my teacher for the last 3 decades so this talk is basically aimed for uh, novice researchers who just ventured for the research career because uh, considering the days what uh, we had in the past we hardly had enough idea of what research is except for its uh, literary meaning so the talk will basically be be focused on some four different points those are like about research is why is research and what is research then the preliminary steps in research and then the presenting research results that is that essentially needs skillful writing then the code of ethics in research that essentially includes plagiarism and many other things so what has to do for the research in fact one uh, i mean in order to perform research what one has to do definitely at the first stage one has to have a fantastic idea first one must have idea okay i am aiming as i stated before i am aiming this talk for the novice researcher not the expert ones so novice i mean uh, this talk is basically addressed to them so first one has to have the idea it may be significant or it may be even simply insignificant very simple then note down the idea what it is and from that point itself the practicing starts you note down the idea 
then you have to do some research whether the idea is relevant it is irrelevant uh, to the current research community or r d community and then discuss the idea about uh, i mean yeah i mean just discuss the idea with your friends your teachers your colleagues you discuss the idea then that way you start developing the idea in a better way then draft the idea properly and again you talk with the others regarding it then gradually you start brushing up the idea and then write now after writing then you have then the stage comes to communicate the idea so this is what the entire research is so about research talking about research what research is it is basically the key to many organizations for uh, developments and earning recognitions in the international platform so what happens then due to research it causes the ultimate development of the nation uh, the use of planned research should uh, definitely enable uh, to generate a wealthy nation and then you have or i mean you may have different kinds of questions like what what would be the role of research in education or say say for example what is the role of educational research in future so these are the different kinds of questions that you may have this uh, this essentially enhances the professional status of the self and also the responsibilities of the self and finally it all becomes responsible for the conceptualization of the those of education okay now what research is basically what research is to simply investigate the facts behind so what one has to have you have to provide the solution basically the research is to provide solutions to complex problems okay maybe you can devote some time to investigate the laws of nature you may think about making new types of products new types of inventions which may even save the cost and finally all these in fact would improve our lives human lives so basically it is systematically perform scientific investigation to solve problems yeah it must be systematically means one has to go logically forward so pathways would be first is that one has to understand the problem then one has to go for the review of the literature if there is any other literature exists regarding similar problems then one may have the thoughts on the possible issues regarding the problems then based on that one has to do research in order to collect the data then you have to analyze the data then finally one has to reach the solution okay so what research is then it is when you write a project <clears throat> when you write a project usually it is like that what is the problem is that it definitely involves i mean definitely based on the idea you have a research objective then what is the research question so, so the research problem actually gives what the research question is then one has to identify the factors that influence the problem means means one has to make some sort of checklist of the problems i mean you may think in a way that suppose i mean just take a very simple something simple say for example i'm using a watch say this watch it has some sort of issues it is going fast or slow some sort of issues it has so what issues it has you have to in fact find out or you have to do a kind of survey that the different people are facing the same kinds of problems or not so different people may address some different types of problems so one has to create a checklist then then based on the checklist one has to formulate the problem with anticipations that is called as hypothesis that is called as 
hypothesis. So all these things are usually involved when you write a research project. And based on the hypothesis, you have to say, you have to investigate and analyze the collection data that essentially the methodology part of the project that constitutes the methodology part of the project. Then based on the project, you have to interpret the data or interpret the results of maybe theory of maybe experiment. One has to interpret the results. And finally, you have to summarize the results in the form of a conclusion. So that is basically the solution to the problem. Okay, so this is what research is. So basically it is, uh, one can say that it is the find out the facts or truth behind, uh, uh, truth about it, subjects, okay? Then it is a kind of organized scientific investigation to solve the problems. One has to test the hypothesis and then one has to develop new forms of ideas. So research is basically, it is a systematic process. Why? The reason is that it basically follows certain steps that are logical, usually logical in order. And these steps are the ones that I stated just now. Okay. Then <clears throat> you come to the research topic. What would be, okay, when a new student, when a new student in fact, uh, goes for research, a student doesn't know what the topic would be. So, definitely, so definitely, that depends on the interest of the student. So, one has to decide the topic. What would be the topic of my research? Then the student finds that there are so many things, then how to do it, and how to deal with. So, one actually finds that may be floating in the ocean. Then one has to narrow down the topic. Topic is to be narrowed down based on the, so for that definitely sources are to be used. That means you have, you may have certain amenities. You may have certain constraints based on the kinds of things that you have in hand or certain tools to solve the problem further. It depends, it greatly depends on the interest, where the interest is. That is extremely important because without interest, one cannot move forward. So, so the interest is extremely important. Then you have to think of the importance of the topic and also it, whether it is relevant to the present research world or research community. In that case, okay, now at this stage actually, while narrow, I mean, in order to narrow down the topic, then in that case, the supervisor's role, in fact, becomes extremely important. The mentor's role, it becomes extremely important to come to a conclusion that, yes, this, if, this will be my topic of research, okay? So supervisor basically, in fact, remains greatly helpful in finalizing the topic. So for that, one has to go through the literature existing that greatly helps in constructing the studies to venture for actually. And also one has to think in a way that it must address some something new, something new must be there. Otherwise, your research will not be appreciated enough. Because citation also remains extremely important nowadays. So to get more citations, Definitely, it must have some sort of thing, some sort of content that actually addresses something new knowledge. And also one has to look for the relevant topics of interest because these are, I mean, based on those only, one can go for narrowing down the research topic. <clears throat> so for that, now you have to first frame the questions. Now, how to frame the questions? You have to frame the questions. I mean, I just gave you the example of a watch. Suppose the watch is giving some sort of problem. So what problems are? You have to frame the question based on that. So based on the research topic, you have to frame certain questions and then you have to decide whether the questions are worthy or not. 
and be focused be extremely focused okay and also definitely the research questions may also change with time it changes with time there are several factors that may play the roles like uh, say for example available tools in the lab available software available manpower so based on all these the question may change with time the research questions may change so as i stated before that it must add something new to the knowledge the research that you should deal with or a new student should deal with that must add something new to the knowledge and then it should be communicable because whenever you send a paper to any journal it is being reviewed by some two three reviewers so it should be communicable so to to communicate research ideas one has to then uh, the very first thing that one has to have very good idea then one has to think of how to present the idea it should be communicable however at the same time i would say that it is the motto of many scientific journals i would say the motto of many scientific journals should be like no valid work however trivial it must be lost to the world means that your idea must be or i mean maybe very simple it may be very simple but i mean people should know about the idea means one has to communicate the idea means you have to transmit the idea from your head to the reader's head the idea may even be simple now it depends on the journal it depends on the reviewers whether your idea is, is acceptable or not okay so while framing the research questions one has to be thoughtful on the time frame say for example for a phd work usually a minimum of three years is needed so whether the kind of question that you have in mind it can be really resolved in three years time frame so this is extremely important then one has to be extremely focused and then the kind of solution uh, that you get that must be validated properly one has to develop the tendency to validate the results so one has to have, um, say for example one has some theoretical back, i mean some some theoretical results that may be validated through experiments or through simulation one has to validate or it can, it should be validated by giving certain logic by giving certain logic so that the reviewers can be convinced so this is all about very basics of research now i am just coming to skillful presentation yeah it is extremely important it is extremely important so very first thing is that what research paper is a research paper is simply a report that summarizes the answers to different uh, two kinds of research questions that you have in mind it summarizes that only okay so it summarizes the theory behind the experiment or prediction okay now whether the prediction or the experiment it is right or wrong that you have to validate you have to validate now uh, to understand means validation means to understand the reasons the, the reasons for which one gets the kind of behavior observed so one has to discuss the appropriate techniques exploited for a certain investigation. So this is what research paper is. Okay? It basically summarizes the answers to research questions in a scientific manner, in a scientific manner. So for that, one has to go through a sequence of steps in order, and therefore, one has to be systematic. Okay? I mean, one should not simply just jump at the conclusions. One has to exploit some science, some scientific methods of inquiry in reaching at the conclusion in reaching the conclusions okay <clears throat> so before proceeding what has to have one has to have the thing that i stated and develop the idea okay 
for writing a research paper, one must have some sort of fantastic idea. Now, it may even be significant or it may even be insignificant, very simple. Okay, so to begin with, one may even go ahead, even if the, the ideas are not enough of, I mean, not of enough significance, one can go ahead with that. Now, when you start writing the idea, in fact, that, in fact, makes the idea developing gradually. So gradually it starts becoming more and more interesting and challenging than that what you had the thought in mind earlier. So writing is basically pivoted to the idea in the first place. That is why I stated before that you first have the idea then note down the idea, then do some research and discuss with others about the idea. Then you make a draft of the idea and then again you discuss with the others. Then you start rectifying the ideas and the writing and then finally one has to communicate. Okay. So challenges arrive upon giving the kickstart. That's what I just now stated because gradually it starts becoming more and more interesting and uh, <clears throat> Then, when uh, I mean, then the point when you get the idea. Then finally, you have to communicate the idea with the readers. So while communicating idea, the purpose is what? The purpose is to communicate your idea from your head. It go. It must go to the reader's head. So these things you have to keep in in mind. So notable aspects are that one has to report or one must report original piece of work and writing must be explicit the writing should be explicit because even suppose you have great ideas those are literally worthless without proper presentation so presentation is extremely important writing is extremely important i can recall the day when i started my research my writing my writing first paper first paper in the year 1989 that time when I wrote, I showed to my supervisor. I mean, the way he guided me, I wrote in that way. Definitely, of course. And I mean, that time I was, of course, I'm still I keep learning. But you know, I mean, writing is extremely important. That I mean, that time I understood properly. Usually, what should be the flow of writing a research paper? Of course, it depends on the individuals. To me, in fact, I follow this way. I first write the theory or experiment because that is the easiest part to write. That is the easiest part. Then the most difficult part is the results and discussion. Then based on that, I draw the conclusion and then I go to write the introduction. Okay, introduction is there in my mind, but of course I do not spend much time. In, but of course it is an extremely important part of the paper, but the easiest part I complete first. So, I mean, that is the reason I mentioned in the beginning that it essentially depends on the individuals. Different people may have different kind of flow. My flow is like that. I write the theoretical part. I mean, theory of the experiment first. Then I go for the results and discussion. Then I write the conclusion. Then I go for the introduction. Now, while writing the introduction, I start gradually rectifying the results and discussion and the conclusion as well. Then I go for the abstract and after doing all these, I write the title, then the references, and then the acknowledgement, if there is any. So this is the kind of flow that I follow. But of course, it depends on the student. It depends on the supervisor, how the supervisor guides the student. OK. <clears throat> so first part of writing the paper is the abstract. Remember, the abstract itself is a complete paper. It is a complete paper. One, one, uh, the, the reader should be able to understand or should be able to completely grasp what is going to be there in the paper. So it is a complete paper. So state the problem first. And then you say, why it is an interesting problem? Why your problem is interesting? That is to be stated. Then you state the what? Uh, state the solutions that you achieve. Okay, so first is the purpose of abstract is to express the study undertaken and the objective. Okay, then you have, must address the problem, 
and the achieved solutions. Then one must conclude the importance of the obtained results and the possible usages. So that is why, I mean, see many papers, suppose, I mean, those are, suppose, paper is, uh, I mean, the idea is very good. But if the paper is badly written, so maybe even if you have very good idea, those may not get enough appreciation. So these guidelines are important. Okay. Just remember the purpose to express the study undertaken and the objective. So I mean, this what abstract means about. Okay. One has to address the problem, the achieved solution, then the importance and the obtained results, and then finally the possible usage of it. So ideally, it must be uh, while constructing the abstract, it should be of one paragraph only. There should not be any references. But of course, some in some conference papers, when you are required to write one page abstract, that time or I mean the 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 definition of those kinds of abstract, I mean those kinds of abstracts are a bit different. Okay. Those kinds of abstracts certainly those incorporate the, the references as well. But usually, while writing a paper, there should not be any reference. Okay, One should never use the word we in the abstract. It is extremely bad. One should not use. I find, I mean, many people write in their, I mean, that way that we do in this, I mean, we, we, uh, we report such and such investigations. It should not be done. And it must always be written in past tense with enough clarity. Okay. So <clears throat> your work will be used more and the feedback you get from the others will definitely improve your research. So you discuss when you write an abstract, you discuss with the others as well so that gradually things become more and more explicit. So explicit presentation is extremely important. Then it is the introduction part. Okay. So what does it do? The purpose is that it describes the background or the related work and contributions. Always use V. When you write in Russian, you use V in a concise form. Okay. The background and the contributions in a concise form, that is what the introduction is. So you must describe the problem. You state the contributions, then write the list of contributions first. Uh, that list of contributions basically drive the papers. Okay, so basically the purpose is to make the readers understand and appreciate the work undertaken. That is the purpose of the introduction. So to organize the ideas well, to be on defense, emphasizing the importance and novelty. Okay, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I mean, the readers must think that he or she will read it, will um, or should read, uh, I mean, read the text. You should do it in this way. You must organize the idea in a way so that the readers must have the kind of thought that okay, one should go on reading the text fully. So that is the I mean that is the soul of the paper. Okay. To be on defense, emphasizing the importance and the novelty of the work state the objectives and describe the reasoning, theory and experiment. All these are to be mentioned in a very short form. Okay, You must describe it, describe the problem. You must mention why the problem is interesting. Okay, uh, <clears throat> And uh, a sentence or two you may write to highlight the efficacy of the obtained results. And also, while writing, you you keep citing while uh, stating the background of the work. You keep citing the other's work as well. I mean the relevant work as well. Okay. Then comes the method. The purpose is that the readers see the scientific merit of the work. The readers actually see the scientific merit of the work. Okay. So one should be able to reproduce the results at ease so that the method should be very clearly written. 
this is the easiest part of the paper to write. It should be clearly written first in order to get the confidence to move further. Okay. So document all the procedures followed here so that the others may not use at least partly in some other studies. You just do it in this way to completely report the methodology used. Stepwise, the description should be stepwise of the general procedure followed and should be in a concise form. Must uh, I mean, one must keep citing the papers as well. Suppose you are writing some sort of formula or something, you do not need to mention the entire derivation. Remember one thing that journal pages are, or spaces in the journal are expensive. So try to minimize the space. Be economic in words. Be economic in space. Yeah. To use the space economically, to consider the relevant materials only that would possibly be common for other investigators. Okay? One must do it in a way. And also practice using references. You, you, I mean, uh, one should not keep repeating the well-documented materials related to the procedures used. So instead, one must cite the papers. Okay. Then comes, it is the most important part, the results and discussion. The purpose is to present and illustrate the findings of the study undertaken. So one must summarize the findings with figures and tables. Uh, one should uh, be able to describe, <clears throat> one should be able to uh, describe each of the results with the emphasis on the observations that are most relevant. Okay. These must be summarized in uh, these, uh, I mean, yeah, in a bit concise and effective form, one has to summarize all the results in a logical fashion, in a logical order. One must avoid superficial interpretation. One must avoid superficial interpretation, okay? To practice economy of words while in-depth interpretation of results. Superficial interpretations are, because it is better not to use that not to use the word may in this. This may be attributed. This may be the reason. Sometimes, okay, but very often, I mean, one should keep avoiding the usage of may here. <clears throat> to use the attributions well for the expected or unexpected observations, focusing on the mechanism, uh, 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 yeah, focusing on the mechanisms, behind so while uh, i mean while explaining certain phenomenon one must describe the mechanisms behind that may remain responsible for it okay then if the results if the results differ okay you may have some sort of expected results and you may have some sort of unexpected results if you have some results if you get some results expected then to furnish the supporting theoretical evidence okay and if you get some sort of unexpected results, so explain the reasoning for that. So if the results differ from the expectations, one must explain why that actually happened. Okay. And if the results agree, then describe the theory along with the supporting evidence. Okay. Then comes to the then comes the conclusion. So the purpose is to sum up the ideas with strong arguments. Okay, one must come up here with a decision with confidence okay that is extremely important the reporting must be conclusive and complete because without conclusion a paper is not complete so this thing must be there to describe in short the research problem undertaken so this, this must be the content of the conclusion to describe in short the research problem undertaken in order to remind the readers the issues addressed, because this thing certainly you have described in the introductory part. Nevertheless, you just make a very short form of that and present the same in the conclusion, but don't keep repeating sentences. Okay, don't repeat the sentences. You frame the sentences by yourself and briefly summarize the overall findings or the key arguments. To zoom in on the key outcomes, okay. Also, one must suggest the future directions. 
one must suggest the future directions. Means how the study would be modified to accomplish uh, some other objectives. The implications of the work, the future prospects of the research undertaken, these things must be there. Okay. So it can be considered that in the form of a call for action or suggestion for future research directions. Okay. So this uh, conclusion part completes the writing of the paper. Now, how uh, you should write to feel really valued for that? One must use simple and direct language. Okay, better to avoid active voice. I mean, uh, 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 yeah, sorry, better to use active voice. Passive voice one should not be. I mean, one should not use. Like we do. Okay, it is not like this was done, or it has been done. You minimize the usage of that kind of language. You use active voice. We do, we take, like that. And tense, tense should not fluctuate while writing. It should not, it, it should not fluctuate. So use of tense, it should be in a way that the past tense uh, should be used for activities undertaken and the present tense for the time dependent facts. This is how the tense must be used. Yeah, I can recall uh, my first writing of one book chapter in the year 2000, in the year 2000, and that book chapter was actually edited by Professor Aklesh Laktakia of Penn State University. And one Professor Oyan Singh of the Department of Applied Physics of ITVHU. That time I wrote my first book chapter. They actually edited the book, and I had one chapter in that. I think Professor B.N. Basu also had one chapter in that book. I wrote the chapter, I wrote the full chapter, I sent to Professor Klesh Lektikia for reviewing the same. Of course, it was the year 2000. Though I had some six, seven years experience, I wrote, he made, Aklesh Lektikia made many corrections in that. And finally, he all, I mean, he, uh, he basically advised me to use short sentences, not long sentences, because my uh, habit was to use long sentences that time. Okay. Then he simply wrote to me this sentence that Mahatma Gandhi reached the common people due to his simplicity. So be simple in writing. You should not go for you should not go for the you should not uh, or one should not go for the ornamental language. Use simple language, use active voice, you will be appreciated. Basically, the idea is that you have to communicate your idea to the readers, and it should go in a very simple manner, not in the complicated forms. So the contributions must be explicit. For that, use examples. To remain focused, one should not go here and there. You avoid jargons. Basic, uh, usually I find that while writing the introductory part, many people write it very long. There is no need, a very short background of the work and then come to the work directly. One should not go for long introduction, okay? And all the points, whatever you mentioned, those must be in logical order. So still I remember uh, the advice by Professor Leptakia whenever I write any paper or any chapter that I should use very simple language and it should go directly to the reader in a in the easiest possible form yeah then formatting the text this is extremely important formatting the text and the economy of space uh, many researchers what they do suppose one sends a paper to a certain journal and paper is rejected the same paper is sent to a different journal without changing the format without change or, or without following the reverse comments and all that they just send it it really leaves a very bad impression the journal editor will definitely look at the text of the paper 
Now, suppose a paper is sent to IEEE before, or it was sent to IEEE before, it was rejected, and then the paper comes to me in the same format. I understand very clearly that it was rejected. It was rejected before, so better not to spend time on it. Straight away reject. So formatting is extremely important. At least I follow it. If I am, I mean, uh, I mean suppose my paper is rejected. I send to Optical Society of America, it is rejected. Now I am going to a different journal. I change the format. I fully change the format. According to that journal, I modify in a way that I can, the best possible way I can, then only I send. So formatting is very important. Because different journals have different kind of format, like you know, uh, reference, I mean, basically in the reference styling, one should follow the format of the journal just to avoid straight away rejection, at least. <clears throat> okay. While writing, one must illuminate on the weaknesses in the methodology as well. Suppose you feel that, okay, in certain situations it may not work, you straight away you mention. Before the reviewers comment, it is better you comment on your paper first. Okay. It should be read by the others, your colleagues. Your friends, your supervisors can help, and both experts and non-experts both can help in that. Non-experts may help in the, I mean, for the linguistic issues, and experts on the subject-related issues. Okay? I mean, both kinds of people can help. Further, to give enough value to the reviewers, and one must be grateful to them, give value to reviewers. Of course, the reviewers are not God. They may be wrong as well. Be always, never be, you know, harsh to reviewers, because you are in this side of the chair, not on this, the other side. Because on the other side, reviewer is there. So one has to be very gentle, very humble. Always write the response to the reviewers in a very humble way. Okay. <clears throat> For thesis writing, I find many people here as well. I find many people write V. It should not be used because this is belongs to a certain person. One should never use we while writing the thesis. Okay. Now, code of ethics. Yeah, it is an extremely important part in drafting the research paper. Ah, it is better. Okay, if I say about my mentor. My mentor uh, has been my teacher, Professor Prashad Khastagir, who actually mentioned in one talk somewhere within the IT, he mentioned once, a man is first a man and then a scientist. So he always used to say that you first be a man, then only you can be a scientist. I still remember his these words. He is no more certainly, but he actually he was loved by all in IT. Professor B. N. Basu also knows him very well. He always used to say that a man is first a man and then a scientist. So first you be a man and then only you can be a scientist. So I still remember these uh, kinds of words that he delivered in one talk somewhere in ITBHU in one evening. <clears throat> I remember that. So I try to follow. Of course, I am nothing in front of him, but ethically, in fact, I try my best to follow what I learned from him, and also definitely Professor Basu as well. He has been my teacher for the last three decades. <clears throat> one has okay. So for that, one has one has to first ask some questions to self, and also there must be some sort of actions from the self. How or what am I? Okay, or what kind of, I mean, what kind of man I, am I want to be? It is certainly an ethical thought. It depends on, it depends on the individual. Every individual is not the same. Everyone's thought is not the same. So who am I and what am I? Basically, one has to identify oneself. 
So look at your soul, look at your own mirror. You look at the inbuilt mirror in your heart and you must understand what you are. Okay. So am I really honest? It is certainly a virtue or state of character. And also, do I give enough value to moral ethics? These are, of course, uh, these are definitely, these definitely depend on every individual. From individual to individual, it will vary. The answer will vary. So, one has to have the sincerity in the thoughts, honesty in reporting, and careful in activities. Sincerity, one must be extremely sincere in the thoughts. While writing, you have to think many times what you are writing. You are giving enough credit to the others where the credit is due. So sincerity is there. Honesty in reporting means you are not stealing anyone's idea. You are not stealing anyone's writing. And careful in activities. Activities, oh yeah, well, I mean, careful in activities means, of course, it is. it, it has a wide meaning. There should not be any, I mean, there should not be errors in writing. All these things are there. And also, the kind of acts you do while writing a research or while reporting a research, it must be extremely carefully done. So in this stream, a very important point is plagiarism. It is nowadays, in fact, a big issue. Uh, a researcher following uh, the true pedagogical approach would possibly answer fairly well. Uh, I'm fairly well with great honesty what this plagiarism is. It, one should not go for all these because it definitely it is uh, it it definitely hurts the academic honesty. Okay. So what is plagiarism? Is plagiarism wrong? Now, how to avoid it? All these kinds of things one must understand. And these are all thoughtful aspects, OK? Because these give the value to the, these are related to the value to the academic honesty, OK? So <clears throat> knowingly cheat or plagiarize basically degrades the moral character, OK? That is, it falls uh, short of a moral ideal. You see, uh, <clears throat> so ethical thoughts, these are all actually ethical thoughts. And these ethical thoughts are definitely relative. It will vary from man to man. And care for responsibilities, these are also a relative issue because everyone doesn't feel equally responsible. So this is also a relative issue. Okay? How to avoid plagiarism? This says for faculties as well as students, it is important. It is extremely important for the faculties and students of why, I mean, why this plagiarism is wrong. To know this is equally important how uh, to know how to avoid plagiarism. Now, what is plagiarism? Basically, it is copying someone's words, someone's words, pictures, diagrams or ideas and presenting them as if your own without proper citation without proper citation that is called as plagiarism uh, inadequate citation inappropriate acknowledgement these are the parts of these are the components of the plagiarism that one must avoid okay these actually uh, <clears throat> fall under the violation of the copyright law and the violation of uh, ethical standards. Okay. Some relevant issues like common knowledge, means knowledge to general public. Okay. Uh, common knowledge means it refers to the information or facts that are found in many different platforms. Okay. Common knowledge. Now, common knowledge, say, for example, how to say common knowledge? Okay. Mahatma Gandhi was a freedom fighter. That's a common knowledge. That's a common knowledge. One doesn't need to cite. 
but many different things uh, or say for example okay we should okay we may come for the scientific uh, i mean uh, scientific thoughts or scientific points like for example law of gravitation was uh, or law of motion i mean laws of motion those were those were introduced by newton newton's laws of motion those were uh, given by newton so this is a common knowledge there is no need of any kind of citation now how these laws were derived definitely one has to cite newton's work okay so these are likely so common knowledge means these are likely to be known by the general public and it is necessary to cite the sources of the facts that is what i say i mean that's what i just now said that if you go for the investigation of how the laws were derived in that case definitely one has to cite the sources of the facts and those are basically why because those are not generally known or the, the ideas that interpret the facts okay then comes the information from the public domain <clears throat> these are also i mean yeah i mean these are the relevant terms in uh, the context of plagiarism so information from the public domain means those are usually unprotected from the copyright okay uh, but nevertheless one must cite the public domain if you are taking the information from the public domain one must cite it one must cite it knowledge from the source one must cite if you get if you are using some source for having certain knowledge one must cite the same and making paraphrase and copying these are also yeah that is also another uh, part of plagiarism <clears throat> putting quotes if you are using it, the statement of others it must be under quotes okay uh, <clears throat> now how to uh, uh, to properly identify plagiarism some plagiarisms are accepted acceptable and some are unacceptable okay <clears throat> uh, some sort of okay uh, i mean to change only if you i mean suppose we are taking a, uh, i mean if you i mean some paragraph from somewhere and you are changing simply a few words and phrases these are not accepted one may have the idea but one must write the same in his uh, his or her own language there is no issue but in that case as well one must cite it one must cite the source so no citation of the work that is not acceptable it is called as intellectual theft that means you are using the other's idea and stating those as your own so there can be okay i mean it can be defined in two different ways like flagged a uh, flagged plagiarism and the other one would be like suspicious plagiarism okay flag uh, uh, the flag one like unquestionably be leveled like you are stealing you are borrowing you are copying without putting quotes so these are the examples of flagged plagiarism and the suspicious ones like weak paraphrasing means paraphrasing is weak without making a proper citation so these are the suspicion suspicious ones okay <clears throat> this can be even deliberate this can be accidental as well accidental one those are, can be acceptable but the deliberate one can no way so that is why one has to think of am i really honest if you are really honest deliberately it will not be done it happened with me as well a few months back in fact i wrote one paper then someone said that these work i mean it was done by me some four five years back and i didn't uh, in fact notice because basically when i communicate a paper i say my students to write first and then i basically go for the abstract i go for the introduction i go for the theory or experiment i go for the results i go for the conclusion but reference listing and all that i don't look at that much <coughs> sorry so this happened with me as well so when i received that kind of 
comment, then definitely I just accepted the fault. And if I accept the fault, that is fine. Just I wrote another addendum, job is over. So if deliberately you are doing, then it is certainly wrong. Now, is plagiarism wrong? As I stated before, it is. It is act of cheating. It is intellectual offense or intellectual theft. Okay, means you are means we are borrowing the ideas or materials without properly acknowledging. Okay, so it definitely it is not uh, the actual academics or true academics. It is a social act. It's a kind of unethical act. Okay, and finally. If I summarize all this, I can say that it is scientific misconduct. Okay, one should not fall into these kinds of things. Now, role of the web. Role of the web. It is, of course, extremely important nowadays because, owing to the easily available wealth of information that the students get from the web, it's a comfortable tool to find borrow information. Okay? And it is a handy tool to perform research. But remember, at the same time, the way the, the kind of knowledge that you are getting from the web, the others also have the equal access of the same. And they can also get the same knowledge from the web. OK, so it must be kept in mind. OK, it is a potential and much tempting source for plagiarizing materials. And everyone can access the materials equally. So it must be kept in mind that as easy as it is for you to find and copy information from the web, it is just as easy for the others as well to acquire the same information from the web. So the aftermath is that if you go for the plagiarism, if you do deliberately, what is the aftermath then? Aftermath is. You can think in a way that do I want immediate pleasure or do I want immediate pain and ultimate pleasure? Do I want immediate pleasure or do I want immediate pain or uh, pain to earn the ultimate pleasure? So it is also a relative issue. It depends on the individual. It depends on the individual. You may still, you may be involved in the act of cheating. Okay, immediately, okay, your paper is accepted, your thesis is approved, and after some years, if those are pointed out, your paper is gone, person will write to the vice chancellor of the university about the thesis, and finally, your thesis also may be, your degree may be cancelled. So it is better to get the, get the immediate pain to earn the ultimate pleasure. The thing, of course, yeah, when I got the comments on my paper, that this kind of idea was done earlier. So definitely it was painful to me to see that. But definitely I accepted that. Okay, I accepted that. I wrote another comment to the journal. They published it. And I am fine. So it depends. It basically depends on the individual. How the, the aftermath can, or, I mean, will be accepted. Okay. So how easy it is. Now, for teachers or referees to detect and prove plagiarism, it's an, that's really an interesting thought because nowadays in the universities or many people, they use different platforms like Authenticate or uh, some other software to check the plagiarism. Of course, I don't believe on these kinds of things. And I hardly go, I hardly ever used all these kinds of tools to check my papers. Of course, I do not use it. I do. I mean, every paper I write by myself, so I hardly have to go for all these things. Uh, truly speaking, I would say that some software people are there just earning money through all this. Nevertheless, the quantity of plagiarism day by day it is increasing. Now, how to stop it? I don't know. So that I mean, that is why one has to think about oneself whether he or she is really honest. So one has to look at the mirror in himself or herself to justify or to identify 
what he or she is. So it is better just to avoid such attempts because the long range consequences, as I told earlier just now, regarding your thesis or regarding your papers, if the matter, if the if tomorrow it is identified that the materials are uh, that the materials, the published materials were plagiarized, the manuscripts or the, the the published papers, the published thesis, all maybe even cancelled. So it depends on the situation. Why is it? It depends on your luck. If you are lucky enough, you are not caught. But if you are unlucky, it will be caught. So long range, uh, long range consequences would be as uh, the aftermath of plagiarism. So it is definitely then situation dependent. I'm sorry, I took more than one hour so far. I think <coughs> care for the responsibilities. Hmm? Care for responsibilities. As I stated before, one must be extremely careful as it is an intellectual offense. And essentially it is a relative issue because it depends on every individual. So before, uh, just remember the sentence by my teacher, a man is first a man and then a scientist. So first you understand what you are and then you act accordingly. <clears throat> So appropriate knowledge, uh, sorry, appropriate acknowledgement must be put, then materials must be proper, must get proper citation. Okay, to be a true academician and pay respect to moral values. All these fall under the responsibilities of a true academician or true scientist, okay? Because the good produces a net benefit. The good definitely produces a net benefit. Remember. So use of, uh, okay, avoid, just to avoid it, use of, you must use your own thoughts and expressions. You may take the ideas from somewhere, but write in your own words, own way. But exactly copied sentences, if you are copying, those must be put in quotation marks. That is why I even uh, wrote uh, separately the two sentences, uh, one I took from Lakhtakia and one I took from the, uh, the late Prasad, Prasad Khastagi. Those were very different. I mean, those I took from them. That is why I wrote those separately. Avoid cut and paste kinds of acts. <clears throat> so ethical thoughts are, of course, these are relative. This depends on every individual. One must be extremely truthful in reporting the results to acknowledge those who helped. In the acknowledgement part, always one must acknowledge the friends or colleagues or teachers who actually helped in completing the draft. Uh, make sure to give credit where the credit is due because every author has similar feeling. If you do not give credit to others, maybe others also, whom you helped, they also may not give enough credit to you, then it will be painful for you. You should not feel painful for the same because you did the same earlier. So it is the aftermath of what you did before. So better to make sure to give credit where the credit is due, okay? To give credit through citations actually does not degrade the work. If you do not give the credit, it actually kills the soul of the paper, okay? <clears throat> because these things would ultimately may result into bad or worst kinds of consequences. Just avoid those, okay? So these are finally the facts to emphasize, okay? Failing to give credit to others uh, would kill the soul of the paper. The credit must go to the original source, the best way to earn, to, I mean, that is the best way to earn the ultimate pleasure, as I stated. I stated my example as well, okay? One must give the credit to the source from where the idea was taken. At the right place, at the right place. <clears throat> because, as I stated before, the good produces a net benefit and is always be rewarded. Maybe today it is painful for you but if you really do good job 
at least the day will arrive, you will get some success. Okay? And even if not, at least you had the opportunity to look at your own heart. You had the opportunity to look at yourself through the inbuilt mirror in you. Okay? So, now, to have, in such acts, actually, just remember that it is very true that heart and mind may not or do not move similarly. Heart and mind, your heart will never say to do anything bad. Never. It is the mind that plays all sorts of things and it triggers to go for something odd. So heart and mind, these two things do not move similarly. It is extremely, you, I mean, so human heart is the best judge. Listen to your heart. Okay. If you're a if your soul says, if your inner soul says that you should not do it, better don't do it. Don't do it. Because it is the mind that plays all sorts of things with human people, with human uh, uh, attitude. So better to listen to the heart. So with this, I come to the end. Your heart is the true torch bearer. So listen to your heart. With this, I come to the end. Thank you very much. That's it. Yeah. I took more than one hour, and I think I'm sorry. I won't go. If you have anything to ask me, you may. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Choudhury, for the wonderful talk. So we have uh, received a few questions. So first of all, it is over to Professor Vasu. He had asked a few questions. So please. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask questions. My comments also. Uh, first of all, my comment, it is always a pleasure to learn from your students. Yes. And I, I must tell you, uh, Professor Panka Choudhury is the editor-in-chief of Journal of Electromagnetic Waves and Applications. I am a member of the editorial board. Uh, and then we have so many interactions and I learn quite a lot from Professor Choudhury. He deserves a big hand. Now, I have a, uh, several questions. I have several questions in mind. I, I delivered a talk yesterday covering different aspects of uh, paper writing. And then in that context, I will ask some questions. First of all, pronunciation. Hearts. Gigahertz. You say gigahertz or gigahertz. Now the the most probably the English speaking world will say gigahertz when we say gigahertz. Similarly, I have a question regarding plagiarism or plagiarism. I mean, I don't I don't know. I don't. I think I have to ask my younger son, Apu, Leonil, or Laktakia. Or maybe Pankaj can throw light on this. Pankaj. So uh, this is my remark. But then, before uh, going to certain specific questions, I like to talk about Professor Prashad Khastegi, which Pankaj referred to a number of times. He was a great man. So for any thesis from BHU, the student, uh, my students, or students of my student, used to go to him and take his blessings. Probably he would alter the title of the paper to some extent, and the, paper, the thesis used to go for submission. And I want to share one thing. Professor C.S. Cha was the Vice Chancellor of 
Banaras Hindu University. He came from IIT Delhi. So after he left VHU, immediately after he left VHU, I happened to meet in a high power EGC, EGC committee. Probably he was the uh, very high official, maybe the chairman or something. So chairman of at least that committee. He asked me, how is VHU? And then he immediately asked, how is Professor Prasad Khastagi? So two questions. Then he asked other members, do you know who is Professor, Professor Prasad Khastagi? Actually, we know that he, is, he was the nephew of, uh, uh, of, of uh, the great scientist Shotish Ranjan Khastagi. Okay, the, the, the radio science uh, scientist. Anyway, now, so you see, then he asked the members, you know why? Because there was an interview where all the experts, including me, learned quite a lot of things and we forgot that we are taking his interview. We, 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 we are just, we thought that we are in a class and our teacher, our guru is teaching us then, then when one hour or so have has passed, the, then Professor Kastigir said, "Sir, you you are all uh, taking. Uh, I think you are taking a lot of time. There are many candidates uh, waiting outside. So should could we could we stop here?" He asked. Then he says, "We the Professor Khastigir, Professor Jha said, C S Jha, the Vice Chancellor, the Art Style Vice, the Art Style Vice Chancellor." See, oh my God. See, we were spellbound by his interview. Spellbound. All the experts started asking questions there, unsolved questions, forgot about the interview. And he was answering often, giving references. That is what Professor Khastagir was, and that is how, that is why Pankaj referred to him. First become a man, then become a scientist. You know? Thank you very much, Pankaj, for referring to him and Okay, uh, you have talked something about, uh, I, yesterday also I had a, a talk about uh, many, many questions. And one was uh, coming to the specific one, past tense in abstract. See, when you are doing, you are describing your uh, your work already report in, reported in the text of your paper, your results, it should be in past tense, okay. But when this was done, by a by a researcher by a by a, by a person who submitted the, the work the reviewer says change it to present tense okay so the reviewer doesn't know it is not a, professor choudhury said reviewers are not god you know they, they also have limitations they're human beings up, up, up top. regarding the simplicity of the language professor choudhury has emphasized yesterday I talked about the fog index, how quantitatively you measure your simplicity by what is known as gunning fog index. I described that in yesterday's talk. And uh, non-acceptance of your paper. Sometimes we feel very sad. We should not be. We should not be. See, I, 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 I told you when I was a reviewer of a paper, the editor of, a, of ITP transition electron devices was, was Richard True, the world famous man in the area of electron guns. I rejected his paper and he said, Professor Basu, I have addressed all the points. Can you, can I take point number this, this as optional? I said, yes, you can take it as optional as an editor, but as an author, perhaps you should, you should not do that religiously follow what I'm saying. So he waited. He did that work. And then after six months, he resubmitted the paper. Another example, recently, very recently, Professor Choudhury, I'm, I'm the edit, in the editorial board of Journal of Electromagnetic Waves and Applications. Professor Choudhury has outright rejected my paper based on the reverse suggestions and it is it is it is, uh, it is to be taken in the right spirit you should learn from what has been said by the reviewers 
don't become sad. I am talking, I am I'm speaking to young, young researchers. Please learn from the, from the remarks of the, so, and then he says how to be polite to the reviewers. Yes, I also give an example. You have to be polite and don't give, always, always see, you, you reply to the reviewers, but that reply, the content of that reply should be there in the modified text. And then you highlight that part and say, okay, reviewer, reviewer sir, I have, I thankfully ac accept your comments and I have added this point in the third paragraph of section four of my revised manuscript. So revision does not mean that you satisfy him by giving reply. So reply should be given in the text of your revised manuscript and highlight that portion and point out to the reviewer, okay, I have done it. Then only it is acceptable. Okay. So there are many points, you know, and I have discussed a lot of the points about plagiarism or plagiarism. I learned from him. And uh, okay. And also I gave, I gave the IEEE format, IEEE show. I, 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 yesterday I showed uh, two, 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 uh, make two presentations. One was the IEEE show itself. So it gave, gave there are many points and I'll give you the ex example of how our paper, paper by Vishal Kesri, uh, his first author, was uh, was uh, taken maybe by a team, by a Chinese Chinese group of uh, workers, <laughs> and and I do not know the name, but the institution I know. <laughs> okay, I visited that institute institution in China. Anyway, so it was a very uh, good lecture, and probably I I I, I said some. Um, in the chat box, I might have sent some questions uh, and then I don't remember them. Okay, very much. Thank you. Uh, very thing. And La Akalesh Laktakia. Yes, you know, m many of you know him. He comes to the Department of Electronics Engineering very often. He is a very, very uh, straightforward critic. In, uh, see, I, I showed one manuscript to him. Okay. And then he said, too much Victorian. You are <laughs> writing too much Victorian English. You are too much Professor Basu. You are too much Victorian. Too much hyphenation. That that thing, no. He said maybe 30 years ago. I cannot forget. State away hits. Okay. So Akhlesh Laktagya is a great I mean, researcher. Maybe day before yesterday, he got the Lifetime Achievement Award of, uh, of uh, what is that, Pennsylvania uh, Institute of Penn State, okay? So uh, something you can see in the Facebook, okay? Or maybe uh, Professor Chaudhary can elaborate on that. Thank you very much. Any questions I can ask, uh, And but I must, I'm very much thankful that I, I, I requested Professor Choudhury to, to give this lecture and then uh, passed on this request to Somak, Dr. Uh, Bhattacharya, and he arranged this lecture. It was a great lecture. We learned a lot from uh, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I had to say something about Professor Khastagir. I can recall him in a way that, of course, in the beginning, I sent six papers and all six papers were rejected. <laughs> in the beginning, I sent six papers to different journals. I think in some two or three journals, I sent six papers. All those six papers were rejected. He said, never get disheartened on that. You take it in a way that you are selected for rejection. It's not <laughs> that you are not selected. You are selected for rejection. Yes. But anyway, I don't really agree with that the reason being it's not a benefit for me at all except that a few points only a few comments only i can think of which i can based on that i can simply enhance or modify the paper otherwise <laughs> yeah that is the thing so there is a question in the chat box that in uh, that uh, what is the typical limit of plagiarism in percentage that can be acceptable in a manuscript yeah, it is usually standard is, I think, 20 to 25 percent. 
20 to 25. So I, yeah, it is like that. It is uh, usually 20 to 25 percent. I personally do not use, but certain uh, certain editorial tasks, they actually use authenticate, and I find that even optic, optic also, when I look at, I find the percentage even if it is over 20 percent, I straight away reject. I do not spend more time on those. May, may I may I give a comment on this? Yeah. My comment. Yes, Hello. Yes, sir. Please, please, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, yes. See, I must. I uh, yesterday I I, I gave uh, the examples of so many plagiarism checkers, and it is a must for a university or an educational institute to put your thesis hmm. uh, uh, and for for that checker, and then give a certificate. You have to take a certificate. From the usually from the library, mm. that this uh, this has you know you have to get the pass certificate from that. Mm. For, for example, I mentioned about uh, the University of the uh, Institute of you know uh, uh, IIT Roorkee. Okay, they they have certain certain uh, checker, so they have to take the certificate. Similarly, Kalani University, West Bengal, the EGC sanctioned checker. Without that, the thesis, because one of the pages of the thesis certificate has to be issued by the library. You can't tell. This is yeah. a fact. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it is there. The same, the same here as well. One has to I mean, go through all these processes and one has and to furnish then, the certificate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before submitting the thesis. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can take one or two quick questions from the, the students. Please go ahead. This is a unique opportunity to ask the question to the, the editor in chief of one of the prestigious journals. Please go ahead. Don't be shy. Anyone having any question, especially the new ones? Pratiba, you want to ask something? See, basically, the thing is that these things were not available in our days. Because, of course, if I take my example, I didn't even know what research is when I joined even for research. I didn't know what research is. Uh, gradually, I, yeah. <laughs> gradually I started. Please go ahead. Because these kinds of talks, like, you know, how to write papers and how, I mean, how to write effective paper, I cannot recall of such kinds of sources or such kinds of concepts in those days, sometime in 89, 90s. I do not know, but nowadays it is the internet because, of course, on one hand, it is extremely beneficial for us uh, for us to have uh, the sources uh, just in hand in a few seconds. But at the same time, all these cheatings and uh, some fraud, uh, some fraudulent acts plagiarism, all these things in fact started. So, and uh, with these, in fact, all these uh, kinds of talks, like, you know, how to write empathic papers or how to, uh, yeah, how to present results, these kinds of talks are nowadays very common. So students, in fact, they come to know from several different platforms about all these. I don't know about if uh, these students uh, here uh, who are appearing, definitely this talk was just aimed for you novice know, researchers only and expert not for the expert researchers. I didn't go for particularly IEEE. If I go for, see, basically, the motto is the same, the ethics is the same, all these things are the same for all journals, except the formatting. That's it. Yes, Professor Somak yeah. Bhattacharya, uh, I have one question for the, on behalf, yeah. of, on behalf of our students. Yeah, please, please. And I now please. have a student. I am a student. I want to patent my work. Uh -huh. there, is, there is difficulty. My teacher can patent my work. I cannot probably patent my work. One question number one. Question number two. I think Indian patent is less expensive than uh, than the American USA patent. So, Professor Choudhury, please uh, give your comments and, and something to. Yeah, the 
regarding the patents, uh, to do speaking, I really don't have enough idea because I never went for these. I never even tried for these. Of course, at one point of time while in BHU, I tried for SK Kak was also interested to patent one certain, you know, certain multi-layered medium to act as monochromatic selector. And that uh, paper was published in SPI proceedings. And SPI, I had to take the permission from SPI. They granted the permission as well. But you know about the others in the paper who were there, I mean, who were there that also you know. And I had to take the signatures from them for their, for their uh, I mean, for their approval, but they did not agree with. So I had to stop there. And after that, I left uh, India and I went to, I left Varanasi first and then uh, I really didn't spend enough time in patenting. Now here, in fact, the trend of having patent very much exists. But the thing is that for us, we have to show something really very much concrete. We have to show something. Papers are, I find that it is the best possible tool because patenting, if you grant a patent, I mean, if you apply for a patent, as far as I know, it shouldn't have been published. There are two types. One is the process patenting and the other one is uh, product patenting. So if I my paper is published, then very possibly the process cannot be patented. Just one, one thing I heard, hello. Mm -hmm. I heard that within a month of your publishing papers, you can patent within one month. Probably. Of course, uh, you see here we cannot move that fast. We, here we cannot move that fast because I have to apply, I have to go to the university, I have to look for the lawyers and all these things. In fact, these things in fact take a lot of time. At the yeah. time I will spend in these things, in fact, I can publish two more papers. So basically due to these reasons, I did not spend much time on this kind of thought, truly speaking. So frankly, I do not have enough idea, but uh, this is uh, true that if I have the paper now, okay, I mean, this is also a new knowledge for me that in that to within a month span, I can go for filing. No, I'm not sure, please verify. Uh, yeah, yeah, I also don't know. I also don't know. So I emphasize more on publications rather than having the patent. So I may not be a right person to truly answer the question to you. Yeah. And you asked basically teacher can patent, but student cannot. No. If the paper is published, then very possibly. Okay. The thing that I faced because patent, for patenting, when I uh, tried for and I mentioned that time I was in Varanasi, I uh, talked with someone and I was told that you have to take the permission from the journal where you published. So since it was published by the SPI, so I wrote to them, they granted me, provided all the contributors should agree with. So the other contributors did not agree with because they had the thought that their name also should be there. Now the thing is that I will go for all these things and and finally, all will uh, eat sweets. In fact, I was not agreed with that. So I didn't go for that. And finally, I left the idea. And then definitely, I realized that really to move for a patent, really, it is too much physical as well as financial. All these things were needed. So it is better to just drop the idea. And here, I never attempted for that. Uh, for the only reason that I stated that I, I mean, the kind of mechanism, of course, it is very slow here. The things move very slowly. And if the paper is published, then patenting, I make, say, say, say for example, I make many movements. And finally, I come to know that since your idea was published, it cannot be patented, then it is just a vestige of time for me. So basically, I did not go for patenting. Yeah. I asked Lakhtaki as well once. I met him. Yeah. In in San Diego, he also said, I never went in, uh, for any kind of patenting and all this. I have I mean, no interest in this. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Professor, Professor Chaudhary, there are a few questions from the students. Sure, sir. So may, may, I, may I invite one by one? So, yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, Shambit Kumar Ghosh, please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So, I am, I am a research scholar from IIT BHU, Electronics Department. So, I have one question. 
to you, sir. So, uh, what is the difference between a research paper and a soft communication? Research paper and soft communication. Short communication. Short. Short communication. Yes, yes, yes. Short communication means it is not an elaborated study. It is okay. very short, about the kind of idea. In the beginning, some two three. In the beginning of some two three slides, I mentioned about it that you have. Suppose you have some idea, you do some research and draft it. You have the idea, note it down, draft it. Draft it and you talk with the others, you discuss, you do some research, you discuss with the other, you discuss with the others, and you try to modify the draft. So it is really short communications are usually very much limited. It is not the it is not a complete study. It is just a part some parts of the result and short communications, uh, short communications are usually meant for uh, those kinds of work those are really new okay. and it should be published very fast okay. like rapid communication it should be published very fast so just the since your idea is published so the others will not spend much time on your idea to work further so you just declare this is the idea you are working on so that to prevent your idea uh, for the others to work on. So basically, it is limited to some two to three pages like that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so the next question is from Mr. Shogatha Chatterjee. So, may I request Shogatha to kindly go ahead? Okay, his mic is not working. So, let me read his uh, query. He is asking that, sir, if possible, can you discuss on how the paper formatting will help to chance of accepting the paper? How the paper formatting? Yes. Sorry? Yes. It will help of ch help on chance of accepting the paper. No, it is just a 1%, 1 to 2%. That's it. Not much. It is just the editor gets the impression that it was not rejected from somewhere else. That is the only thing I would say. Like, like the journal that I edit, I get many papers. Those are rejected from the IEEE and the author submit the, uh, the draft in the same format. So since it is in the same format, so it is very clear to me that paper was reviewed by someone else already and it was rejected. So why should I take more time or spend more time? Yeah, of course it is. Not a hard, uh, not a hard and fast rule that all rejected papers are all worse because it depends on the reviewer as well. The reviewers thought, the editors thought, but just to avoid because you know nowadays there okay I, we get many papers, a space is less, so one must go for the economy of the space as well. And we if and I usually I myself do not keep too many papers in backlog, so I do not go for accepting many papers. Uh, yeah, just uh, say, 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 for example, at this point of time, maybe the publisher has some has the number of articles for two more issues only. That's it. It is not that your article will be published after six, seven months, not like that. So, uh, so I don't do it. So it is better. Uh, I mean, that is the way I, in fact, reduce the uh, flow of the papers. Or uh, you, uh, you can say, the, the accumulation of papers. Yeah. So the next question is from one of our ex-students, Dr. Shomodit C. So Dr. Shomodit, can you please ask, can you please unmute and ask? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my question is uh, actually uh, I have faced uh, related issues actually. Like sorry, uh, sorry, sorry can you get clear? I could not follow. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, my question is, what can one author do if one of the reviewers, uh, he deliberately rejects a paper, maybe for some personal issue, like in, in this, uh, in uh, our, uh, this demo journal, it is a double brand journal. So I used to thank you. That is one solution maybe. But in other journals, it is like the reviewer is able to see the authors. So uh, uh, what, what may be the solution, sir? No solution, just send to some other journal. Nothing else I can say. <laughs> For personal issues, you cannot say. You cannot discuss all these things with the editor that I have personal issues with the... 
<laughs> I mean, there is no channel for it to go through. So it is best just agree with that, just digest it, send to some other journal. Okay, sir. thank so you. Peter, don't uh, uh, don't invite any kind of conflict with editors of any kind. Of, I mean, editors of any journal. Better don't go for any kind of conflict because I remember very well just the kind of stories that happened in the issue. That person, yeah, Professor Basu definitely knows. It happened with uh, D.J. Menon, Dr. D.J. Menon. When he was in UK, it happened with him. The supervisor started fighting with the <laughs> with the journal editor, and finally, after waiting a year or so, the paper was rejected. So finally, he had to come back like that. Yeah, I mean that happened so. So better don't go for all kinds of conflicts. When it is rejected, if even if it is personal issue, just I mean you have no other choice except to digest. No other choice. Yes. And this uh, this uh, electro your your this demo journal is very much transparent in this regard. I have seen there is one one uh, line regarding uh, whether the author has stated any conflict, and that is also published in the paper. That is very yeah, transparent. That is, in, that, that is nowadays in almost uh, all journals. One has to state the conflict of interest. Yes. yes, sir. That is very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, we have another another couple of questions. So one is from. Uh, Ms. Pratibha Varma. Pratibha, please unmute and go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. Sir, I have questions. Uh, sometimes when we do the literature review, so uh, on that time, many technical terms come and we do not understand the concept properly. So on that time, how shall we proceed with the literature review? Mm -hmm. Discuss with the supervisor to rectify the issues. Okay, sir. If you do not understand, definitely then, I mean, that is why men, the mentor is. You may discuss with the supervisor about the technical terms. Of course, in, I mean, maybe you are the new, you are a wise researcher, you are new to the field. Maybe you do not know. And not knowing something is not a kind of sin. If you don't know something, it is not the same. So just tell me straight away, you may talk to your mentor, you may talk to your other research colleagues to rectify the issues. And ultimately, you can go to your supervisor as well. I mean, he or she is always there and he, and he or she is meant for that. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, I, another question is there from Ms. Madhavi Chandra. Madhavi, kindly unmute and go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much sir, for this informative lecture, sir. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask you, uh, in uh, papers, uh, sh uh, should we write all the details of our uh, uh, geometry or material in the paper, sir? You must disclose information as much as possible. That is why, I mean, that is why uh, the section methods is theory or experiment this thing is there so that the the others can judge the merit of it the reader should be able to judge the merit of it so that he or she can reproduce the results so you must give the information of the entire procedure that you followed as much as possible but definitely you should not keep repeating the derivation say for example the derivations those are presented in a different paper just cite and go because at the same time you have to keep in mind the economy of the space just cite the work and move forward yeah but definitely uh, the inform i mean it should be explicit okay, overall if i say that it should be explicit writing the explicit writing means content wise grammatically all these things in fact it covers all okay, thank you professor thank Chandri. you sir. Thank you, Professor Choudhury, for this wonderful talk. Maybe one quick question at the end. Maybe we can take one more quick question. Yeah, I am here. No worries. You are, I mean, you may <laughs> you may ask as many as you wish. Yeah. Anyone else please have uh, having any question? Please go ahead. <laughs> Dipti, you want to ask something? Sir, I have one question, sir. Yeah, please, please. Uh, 
actually sir in maximum time people are using some equation paper sir uh, the sorry, equations, sorry, sorry. equations uh, sir your voice is breaking in fact okay it is intermittent yeah uh, actually sir uh, people are using some reported equation in the uh, paper sir in the writing of paper sir whether we can means uh, means you can introduce that equation in our paper or we can uh, you can give means uh, reference yeah sorry uh, uh dr somak if you understood well in fact the voice actually, is you know, cracking that's why why is actually, this sir uh, it is audible sir audible, yeah, sir. audible but all the um, words are in fact cracked that's why uh, actually sir uh, people are using some reported equation in the paper sir uh, paper sir means when writing the paper sir but uh, we can uh, write the equation in the uh, paper we can or we can ref, ref, refer it sir oh i see you are saying about repetition is it yeah yeah yes sir okay, repetition of the equations you may okay you do not need to perhaps okay of course it basically it depends on the content maybe you write the equation but of course you must cite the source from where you take the equation you do not you may not need to present the entire derivation of the equation based on the content or related to the content the actual equation in demand you may present and you must cite the source yeah i'm not very sure if i answered well your question no no it's yes, okay it's okay may, may, may i speak may, hello uh, yeah sir please yes please. yes you have answered uh, uh, to my satisfaction yes you have answered already that question suppose you write uh, you are going to write some equa equation write down it can be one can one can find uh, from then you put the that equation number okay etc then that you put the equation so no problem but you have to you have to put the equation number or it is uh, source you know as uh, professor choudhury is saying is it clear to you your, your questions yes. were i mean yes sir. Say, yes sir actually yes, yes sir okay, what you can do is to write a, a certain portion text and send it to uh, me okay i will check it with that i i i have you can you can get my email from somak yes, dr patel yes. suppose you write some portion and then you are you are taking some equation by writing from some other source okay send it to me and then i i will tell you uh, it is better to put reference number there in i suppose it is in i to p then number Other, otherwise it could be name and year style whatever it is okay so give it yes, then if you uh, if you write to me i will i'll suggest you how to write it yes, yes you can sir. do it actually i have seen so many papers are same yes. equations are repeating in okay okay yes sir so okay. that's why i asked whether we yes, can yes, yes. Uh, we will repeat okay. that equation or uh, we will you can you can if it is I necessary will... if it is necessary for the purpose of presentation of your work in the text of the paper you have to do it you have to do it okay yes sir, yes, sir. right don't yes, repeat sir. i mean as professor choudhury said don't don't repeat say electromagnetic boundary conditions you are putting something and that is well known maxwell's equation there are no you should you should not repeat that sort of equations you know yes sir. put that one without without putting those equations you know yes okay i think uh, your question is answered yes sir thank you sir also thank you to pankos sir it is a nice and interactive session sir any any other question from the students please go ahead reddy you want to ask anything hello sir after the yeah tell sir reddy sir don't have mic so he cannot okay, okay. ask okay okay fine fine no issue no issue okay so if there is no no further yeah yeah ready any question if you have please write
okay he does not have any queries so as it is now at the fag end of the this particular uh, webinar may i request all of you to kindly put on your videos so that our volunteers can take the screenshots of this particular session may i request all of you to kindly turn on your videos so that the volunteers can take out the uh, this, this screenshots They are basically all from BHU, isn't it? Yeah, mostly are from IIT BHU. Right. And uh, they are students over here, masters or PhD. And some of them are from outside also. Right. Chambit, you are taking? Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, before I end up, let me thank uh, Professor Chaudhuri once again for, for spending his precious time, especially on the weekdays, on Saturday, so, so weekend I should say, I'm sorry, on Saturday I have taken the complete second half of the Saturday, right, to spend with uh, his alma mater. It's okay. Right. Right. It was nice to meet you all, it was nice to see Professor Basu. Yeah. I got introduced with you for the first time. Yes, yes, yes. And please visit us once the situation will improve. We will be very happy to host you over here. I usually come every winter. I come mm -hmm. last year, it was not possible. This year also, I think, gone. <laughs> like but, but, when, but you have my email ID and everything. So, when, whensoever you are planning, please. Ping, 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 ping me up. I'll be very happy to. COVID 19 to just extracted or eliminated all sorts of plants. Yeah. yeah. What is the condition in Malaysia now? Malaysia also, it is uh, gradually now after ruining the, after the economy is ruined, they are gradually opening. <laughs> so this is what the situation we have been facing now. Until uh, we, are, we cannot go interstate. Mm -hmm. In the shopping mall, say people who are not vaccinated, like ch uh, children, children less than 12 years, they are not allowed. In many of the malls, they are not allowed to enter. In some, they allow, along with the guardian. So like that, and this is how the life has been here. But still, uh, the attendance, the government says that from the first of